One more now on the battle facing David Cameron in Europe over plans to force Britain to take in thousands of refugees. We're joined now by Nigel Farage, who stepped down as leader of UKIP after he lost in Kent last week. Uh, Mr Farage, uh, what's your view? Should the UK take a few thousand more genuine refugees into this country if we're able to? I went to the Strasbourg Parliament three weeks ago. I gave a speech on this. I predicted exactly what would happen, uh, and it was just totally ignored by the UK media. There is a common EU asylum policy. Mr Juncker, the Commission President, has made it clear that basically anyone that comes across the Mediterranean will be resettled within the European Union. They've done completely the opposite to what the Australians did back in 2008 when they faced the same problem. Uh, I would argue strongly there is a lot more we should do to help those countries in Africa. We should get rid of the EU's tariff policies on their agricultural products. We should stop the rape and pillage of African waters. There's lots we should do. Uh, but I don't want us to be part of a common EU asylum policy. And even if Mr Cameron attempts to resist, all they have to do in Italy is to give people EU passports and then all of them, if they wish, can come to Britain. So I think Cameron's first Euro crisis has started today. There's a bit of scaremongering going on there, isn't there, though, Mr Farage? The European um, Commission doesn't have the authority to enforce such a plan. It, the, and also, the UK is not bound to participate. That There's no element of compulsion that, that actually legally exists. Once you come into the European Union, if people are accepted by other EU states and given EU passports, they are then free to move to Britain. This actually gets to the whole point um, of why UKIP says you cannot control migration into Britain unless you control your own borders and you can't control your own borders as a member of the EU. So whatever the Home Office statement says, you know, the Home Office is saying we shouldn't be part of a common external policy, but we support free movement within. Once people have come in and be given EU passports, there is literally nothing we can do. Do you have any compassion for those dying in the Mediterranean? Well, I've always actually been an advocate uh, of saying that Britain should give refugee status. And I, and I particularly talked about the plight of some of the Christian communities in Libya and in Syria. But what we're talking about here is something different. What we're talking about here is a signal that has been sent to many of those countries in North Africa that, that, that the door to Europe is open. Uh, we could be talking. We, we really, over the next few years, could we talking about up millions and millions of people potentially coming to Europe. As I say, the Australians face the same situation. They dealt with it by saying, you will not make Australia your home, but we will do what we can to make your home better. The European Commission has sent the opposite signal. Do you think you're uh, in line or out of step with public opinion, given the fact that, that you lost one MP uh, in the election, you're now down to one. Do you think the British public is behind you on this? We're the third biggest party in British politics. We got as many votes. We got more votes than the SNP and the Lib Dems added up together. In fact, if you put Plaid in as well, we're pretty much tied with the other three. We're the third biggest party in the United Kingdom in terms of the popular share of the vote, and that's been reflected by one seat. That just goes to show that the voting system we've currently got is bankrupt. Are you stepping down or are you just taking a holiday? No, I'm stepping down. And I've got an NEC meeting this afternoon, uh, and that's what I'll be doing. And for the first time in 20 years, uh, I will take some time out uh, to think about my life. But you did say, though, in the autumn you were going to come back. What if, what if, there's, no one to, what if there's no one to replace you in the autumn? Oh, there are lots of people to replace me. There's no question about that. I mean, UKIP has grown enormously. It's much more than a one-man band. Uh, I need some time out uh, to think about the rest of my life and what I want to do. OK, Mr Farage, good to talk to you. Thanks very much.